Well, let's return now to our top story. The US President Joe Biden has been accused of forgetting crucial details in a special counsel's report. It's raising questions about his capacity to stand for a second term as president. Deeptika Laurent is here to take us through the press reaction to that story. Well, a lot of reactions in the conservative U.S. press, Sharon, I'll get to that in a minute. This report, it follows special U.S. special counsel Robert Kaher's report uh, in whether, into whether Joe Biden should face criminal charges for careless handling of classified documents. Now, the report, uh, in, in answering that question, which the answer of which was no, also painted a troubling portrayal of an 81-year-old Joe Biden. It's uh, the details of which are outlined today in the Washington Post. This report um, showing that uh, Joe Biden uh, had a memory, uh, appeared to have memory losses. He was hazy on key details, like when his vice presidential term ended. He was also unable to pinpoint within several years when his son died. He also could not recall um, uh, uh, an important debate on troop level in Afghanistan. And naturally, the details of this report have been um, uh, really fodder for the conservative media. It's what uh, the National Review, this is one U.S. conservative press, which says that uh, the council account of me Biden's mental decline is frightening. And they say that it's frightening whether or not you like Donald Trump uh, uh, as an alternative. Um, the, uh, the magazine adds accusatorily that uh, Joe Biden, I quote, is too old and senile to prosecute, apparently, and yet Democrats will spend the next year arguing that he has a physical stamina and mental acuity to serve another four years. Now, in another conservative press, the Washington uh, Examiner, uh, this, uh, this, um, uh, this press, uh, this media outlet argues that uh, the fact that Joe Biden's memory loss dates back to uh, almost a decade ago is perhaps even grounds for invalidating his, um, invalidating his uh, presidency, essentially, by invoking the 25th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. This 25th Amendment was drawn up after the death of uh, JFK uh, and stipulates that the president or vice president can be replaced in the event of death, removal, um, res resignation or incapacitation. Turning now back to one of our other big stories uh, this morning, Ukraine's military has undergone its biggest shakeup of military leadership since the beginning of the war. Has it been covered in Ukraine, Dikti? Well, after months of speculation, Sharon, the head of Ukraine's army, Valery uh, Zaluzhny, has been removed from his post. A lot of coverage, as you can imagine, um, from uh, the uh, Ukrainian press today. This is from the Kyiv Post, uh, which uh, says that uh, Vladimir Zelensky and Zaluzhny both discussed new leadership and agreed that the time for renewal is now. But, you know, much has been also reported of bad reported bad blood between the two in recent months, especially as Ukraine's uh, war efforts stall. The paper, uh, for his part, Zaluzhny has been an extremely popular military leader. Uh, this paper noting that he also helped set in motion back in 2014 a new style of military leadership, one that was um, featured a more agile army and was more Western-influenced. Now, uh, filling in his shoes uh, is um, uh, another uh, high-ranking military uh, pers uh, personality in Ukraine. This is Alexander Sirsky. He, he also played a pivotal role in 2014 when uh, Russia invaded e the eastern Donbass region. As uh, Kiev Independent today reports, uh, he's also been head of Ukraine's ground forces since 2019. On a different note, Edward Enenful, he was British Vogue's first black and male editor. Deep T, he's published his last ever cover of the magazine, and it really is an incredible one. Yeah, what a cover it is. It's a class photo. Let's see if I can bring it up for you. It's a class photo uh, featuring celebrities, non-celebrities, uh, models and non-models, but all women. And as you can see there, Oprah Winfrey taking centre stage. There's also Jane Fonda, um, uh, Salma Hayek, uh, as well as uh, models like Cindy Crawford. You also have Laverne Cox, the first transgender model to appear in British Vogue's, uh, on British Vogue's cover in 2019. This cover really a testament to his legacy, uh, the Washington Post says, uh, challenging the industry to be uh, fully and wholly uh, inclusive in all aspects of fashion. 
there was a lovely uh, post on X uh, by British Vogue where you can see the picture a bit more cl in close up and uh, they explained that the story behind this photo is also quite incredible. Edward Enninful uh, wrote hand wrote letters to all 40 women personally inviting them to New York. They all flew there on their own expenses and gathered around for this uh, shoot that involved 40 women in a sort of class photo. So this is not photoshopped at all. This was actually a photo shoot involving 40 women. So quite a logistical effort as well, Sharon. Finally from you, Deepti, the New York Times is reporting that this year's Olympic medals will have a little bit of gold, silver and unusually iron. That's right, actually wrought iron to be precise. Uh, New York, the New York Times reports that the medals uh, that will be handed out, actually over 5,000 medals that will be handed out at this year's Olympic Games, will feature on one side a hexagonal piece of the Eiffel Tower. The iron is actually recycled from fragments of the Eiffel Tower's original construction that's sort of been lying idle in a warehouse for years. It's a way of, of uh, recycling the material uh, but no doubt adding a very Parisian touch to what is already shaping up to be quite a French Olympics. Show. And we're less than six months away from it now. Deep T, thank you so much for that. That's Deep T. Laurent joining us there with our press review.